Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. G Mr. DeJoy, many of the problems the UP USPS faces can be traced all the way back to last summer. The chairwoman is correct. Last summer, there were efforts to dismantle mail sorting machines, cut overtime, restrict deliveries, remove blue mailboxes, all in the name of operational efficiency. I have no doubt you'll attempt to deny these actions or justify them as you have previously, but we've all seen the reports and my constituents did not in experience an increase in efficiency in any way. Uh, instead, they experienced delays as well as missing and misdelivered mail, and yet you want to try this again. You've proposed more service cuts, doubling down, instituting higher and region-specific pricing and lower delivery expectations. So I have three questions for you. Number one, Americans are clearly relying more than ever on the United States Postal Service than before the pandemic. Why are you doubling down on the policies that have led to massive delays? Number two, how would doubling down on the, these policies help create uh, th that helped create these issues, help Americans receive their mail on time. And number three, given the severe issues that the Postal Service has faced since you were appointed Postmaster General, can you explain why you think you are still qualified to hold that position? So, uh, Congressman, uh, first of all, I don't agree with the premise that you introduced the question on with with regard to changes that i've implemented have caused these uh, uh these the, these issues these as as i said earlier uh, uh, uh the uh our network and the financial condition of the postal service have been eroding substantially and we did have to operate in the pandemic just like every other uh operation in in, in the nation uh, uh, with regard to uh, 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 the, the, the changes that we're looking to make, it, uh, we're looking to capitalize on our strengths and address our obvious weaknesses. And uh, uh, the, the, this plan, the changes that we'll make are about service excellence and affordable prices. It's about maintaining six and seven day a week delivery. It's about investing in the organization and spurring on innovation to uh, 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 to grow and and importantly, which this Congress uh, continuously fails to recognize, part of the law is to be self-sustaining, and that is what this this board and this management team is trying to address. We we suffered almost ten billion dollars of losses last year. We suffered eight almost eighty billion dollars of losses over the last seven years. If I paid all my bills, I'd be out of money tomorrow, and. You know, I'm trying to take this board and myself and this management team are trying to take seriously the issues that face us is that we have a bet we're in a broken business model and changes need to happen. When we roll out our plan, I think any reasonable person will uh, understand the the, uh, 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 the the challenges that we face, uh, but they will also see the optimism of the plan. And uh, why why should I stay? Uh, because uh, uh, I'm committed to, to seeing this change. I have the expertise to do so, and I have the uh, uh, tenacity and the, the stamina to um, undergo this type of questioning. Well, uh, Mr. DeJoy, on December 21st, 2020, I wrote you a letter asking how you plan to improve delivery standards given the many concerns that the people in my district in northeastern Pennsylvania have shared with me about their mail service. I received your response, which stated you were doing everything you could to provide timely and efficient service. That was December. Christmas is over. The election is over. It's now March, and things are simply not getting better in northeastern Pennsylvania. What is it that has caused these delays to continue well into March? What is the USPS doing to ensure these delays are resolved as soon as possible? And specifically, how are you dealing with staff shortages to ensure there are enough workers to do the work that is necessary? Um, a, a f fair question. I, I th throughout the country, uh, 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 in, in different, uh, especially in urban areas, uh, we have had uh, absentee issues with regard to carriers. But for the most part, throughout the nation, if mail and packages got to our carriers, we delivered at over 
nine over 98 percent of the time we have had I've had, what we we have hired over 200,000 people uh, in, in less than a year trying to fill uh, positions I uh, we have converted 10,000 people in December we have not converted people in many 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 years uh, so we're very committed to try and stabilize the workforce. It's number, my number one thing I'm, I'm focusing on. I've been working with our union leadership uh, on this to change the trajectory of our turnover in that, in, in that area. But the rest of the problem, sir, is not at the delivery units. It's in our network. Uh, we do not. We, we, we have standards that require flying planes. We don't own any planes. We overwhelmed any, all the aircraft that we could have. We would just, significantly short on aircraft to, to move to move volume around our trucking network is uh, 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 is, is pro problematic but we also overwhelmed that in terms of uh, capacity we bought every piece every bit of transportation we could we could get and we could just w just wasn't enough now with regard to March we were still delivering peak season volume in Jan all through January uh, uh, we delivered 1.1 billion pieces up to the end of the year and had significant, we took us January to, to work it down, and then we got hit with the storms. I woke up, I came in one morning, and the, the winter storm was there. 71 million addresses potentially impacted. Uh, um, and uh, we, uh, uh, many of our hubs, uh, that got down to about 20 million. Uh, many, many of our hubs were frozen. We could not get uh, mail and packages through the network. So the, big, the problem, sir, is bigger than just your locality. Uh, it, it's a network operation, and our network is in bad shape. Mr. Chairman, I, I have no further questions for the witness. Thank you. Uh, just one question, Mr. DeJoy. The, um, um, the USPS has a, this pre-funding requirement for uh, health care and pensions uh, for many years into the future. That was enacted in 2006. Uh, successive uh, uh, members of top management at the Postal Service um, have uh, expressed uh, a wish that that were not the case, which is a, a burden that no other governmental uh, related agency faces. Um, and last year in the, in the U.S. House, uh, we passed the USPS Fairness Act, which had more than 300 co-sponsors, including more than five dozen Republicans. Uh, what is your position on that, Mr. DeJoy? Do you think it's advisable that we pass that? Uh, and uh, uh, will it help with budgetary problems? Uh, 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 that's a, a very important question and a big part of our big part of our plan, sir. I've been working uh, with my with our team here, with our union leadership, uh, to get two things out of uh, legislation. One is the uh, in, integra integration of Medicare uh, and the pre uh, eliminating the prefunding requirement. I've had I've been up to. Uh, uh, on the Senate side, on the House side, speaking with different uh, members, it's very important. It's about fifty billion dollars to us over the next ten years, and we hope that the uh, that the Congress sees it's, uh, it sees it sees this through. It's very very important to uh, to our future. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman.